So he's making a conscious effort. This is AP Lit. We're discuss, discussing Red Badge of Courage, first 11 chapters. He makes a conscious effort. He, he, he repents. Okay, so he's decided, I'm a new man. I, I don't want to do this. I want to go back. But the fact is, he doesn't go back. He goes in that direction, but he doesn't go back. Remember, and we, we need to get it. Remember, what does he do instead? Instead of going back to his unit, I guess they're right over there. I mean, he just made a beeline in this direction, trying to go back exactly where you came from. He doesn't do that either. So he, he doesn't sound like he has repented, but he's still turned around. See if we can figure that out. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting how when he fights and he, him and his regiment are victorious, he attributes it to them, it to them like being, you know, uh, good at fighting and like following what they're supposed to do. But as soon as he comes, like when he realizes that the rest of the people he left weren't, he attributes it to like sheer luck and the fact that they're like they somehow won even though they shouldn't have. And so it's interesting to see his like his, like self centered Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can see that. You know, he's a part of it. He see, oh, yeah, we're all one. He feels like he's a, he's a hero yeah. minutes later, and he's got to make, and this is why I like the book. It so, it's so describes the way we are. We blame other people. His character feels very fleeting. Like, he, yeah. He goes between one, he yeah. goes between feeling like a hero to running away to being, you know, criticizing those who, you know, stayed, and then it, it feels like it's kind of back and forth. It's and, not so and that's because... That's why I like the book, because it's about that. It's about finding out who you are and, um, you know, growing up. Matt. Um, I thought it was surprising and uh, almost shocking how uh, during the battle, like after he ran away, he was uh, cheering um, for the enemy to win and for um, his side to lose, almost that, like, to validate his action for running away. Yeah. And, it, and it's like, um, he's not even thinking of, like, the ramifications of that and, like, what would happen if it did actually did lose. Right. Um, I mean, I, I think this is a. I remember a kid, and this happened more than once. But like he, um, he didn't make. Like I taught some ninth graders, and he didn't make the JV team at Page. So all of a sudden, he, he tried out, didn't make the JV basketball team at Page, ninth grader. So I hear him talking about how great Dudley is. Doug, well, Dudley's gonna beat Page. You know, Page is nothing. Because he didn't make the team. He, I guess he wasn't good enough or he quit or he didn't get along with the, whatever. But now he's talking about the other school being, oh, they're a lot better. Yeah, because, I mean, that makes sense to me that we've all done it. You used to be a part of this group. Now you only want bad things to happen to that group. Think about it. Used to, whatever it was, you know, that used to, but then when you were in it, that's what you're saying. When you were in it, it's great. When you're in it, it's great, but as soon as you're that's outside right. of it, yeah. Because you feel like, you know, since I'm yeah. not there, it, it, something, it, it doesn't deserve to do well. Because you see the whole world through you. That's all that matters. Me, I'm the center of the world. And, and to grow up, I think we're learning you cannot be the center of the world. If you're ever going to grow up, you gotta, we got to get over that. Yeah. Well, I thought it was interesting how like, Henry claims to like, education for like, why men are weak nowadays. But then when he's like in battle and he's like trying to run away, Right. That's like the exact problem he had. So it's kind of, he's like a hypocrite. Yeah. But he doesn't realize it, which I think is part of the reason why he tries to like look to others so much to like justify his actions. Because um, like he wants, he just doesn't want to be wrong. So he'll kind of do whatever it takes. He'll believe whatever, like, whatever's convenient for him for that to be the case. I like the words you use because those are the words that I'm going to use throughout this. Is how does he justify his actions? You have to justify what you did. You have to give yourself reasons for why you did that. Um, I, you had a, yeah. Um, I think in going to the work, it's kind of a turning point because he would go into nature to kind of feel if he can try to escape the war, but then he saw like the dead bodies and he was like. That is the turning point of the story in a lot of ways, literally. Because now he turns around and he goes back. 
And what what did you just give any reason for that? Why does he go back? Because he finds it's easier. There's no escapement, and he's not going to get out of it, so he might as well. You see, his best you see the irony. He's trying to get as far away from death as possible, and he gets in this. He goes to this place. It's very peaceful. It, he almost calls it like a chapel. What does he see in there? What is the thing that that causes him to turn around? So he can't get away from death. How is that true for everybody? If you're afraid of death, it, you, you can't run away from it. You've got to deal with it. Every human being has got to deal with it. And so he does, and life under any circumstances is better than death. So he goes back in the same direction. He doesn't want to go get shot over here, but this is worse, because at least he, over here if he dies, he's with people. Here, it's all alone. And so he turns around and, and heads, but he doesn't get very far yet. And maybe it goes back to his like fantasy of wanting to like die as a hero. Yeah. He doesn't want to die like just as anyone. He wants to do it for a cause. Right. And so that's also a motivation to go back. And it's it's hard for him to shake that. Um, well, somebody tell me where he goes after he leaves this chapel, this back in the woods, um, in nature. Yeah. Nick. Is this when he ends up in the line of the wounded soldiers? Yeah. 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 Um, and then his friend is also there, uh, Jim, and then he ends up he ends up dying right in front of him. And then he just totally realizes that he can't escape death and take the Did you finish that? Yeah, that would be the real turning point. The first turning point, I mean, there are lots of turning points in our lives. You know, one thing doesn't completely change us, but the fact that he turns around and heads back, he sees those guys, and why is he so, what's so ironic about his walking with those um, those wounded? You had something a minute ago, didn't you? Oh, I was just going to say something about him being kind of Okay, well, we'll come back. Who, what, why is it ironic that he's walking with these wounded? the name of the book? Red Rabbit he wants a wound. That's what he wants. The, the wound represents that he, you're courageous. If you're you get, courageous enough to be able to go and fight and actually receive right. one rather than right. what he did. Right. So he wants one and he has one. Mm -hmm. but, but it's not the same. Right. Explain. Why is, what is it, what's the wound that he has? He won't go out and get one. He'll just fall back. Yeah. He's, he, the guilt. That's his wound. Even the tattered soldier says, oh yeah, sometimes those that you can't see are the worst ones. That's because, in his case, it's it's the guilt, yeah. Um, well, we got a couple of people who still need to share with it. Elizabeth, you said something a minute ago. What was that? I, I wanted to come back to that. Oh, that him going into the woods was the turning point. Right. Well, the second turning point, then, if that's the way to what the call, what, what we should call it, um, Mass. I mean, Madison, you can, uh, Julia, Todd, anybody want to talk about what is the second thing? It's the most important event in this story. It's the death of Jim Conklin. So what happened? Yeah. Um, well, he, Henry kind of like goes back and he sees Jim, but doesn't see that he's injured yet. And then when he sees that he's injured, Jim kind of like runs away. Yeah. And he kind of like collapses and dies. And then Henry sees that he has like a big wound on his side. Yeah. Why does that change everything? Nick kind of mention it. Would you repeat that? Why does that, what, what does that change in him? Because it got him, got him angry. Right. That, that he needed to kill his friend. And so now it was personal instead of being personal. It also probably made him feel something like more guilt about himself because if his own friend had gone out there and, you know, been courageous enough to receive this wound and died because of it, it makes him feel even more guilty that he did not die. Exactly. Um, Turn to the end of, I think it's, I thought it was 11, maybe it's 10, uh, maybe it's 9, let me see. Yeah, turn to the end of chapter 9, the very last sentence. 
So Nick says that he turns um, with a livid rage toward the battlefield and shook his fist. So he's angry. He was, why is that a good thing to get angry? Yeah, that's his motivation now. His friend's been killed. Uh, it's in, I'm sorry, it's nine, very end. And the last one, this is apparently a very famous sentence in literature. I didn't know that until I read the commentary. The sun or the red sun was pasted in the sky like a wafer. What does that mean? Why is that important? It's odd. The red sun was pasted in the sky like a wafer. Wafer? That. that yeah, maybe that's what you kind of think of, but that's odd. That, that doesn't make any sense. It's a red sun. Think about the context. He just watched his friend die, um, and he's angry. And then it says the red sun, um, sun I guess can be red in the morning or evening. Yeah. I guess it just visually shows how mad he was. He's so mad that. Sun yes, um, that's a good way to put it. What else could that red represent, and why pasted, and why wafer? We, I told you that the story. You, you might have said it too, Nick. I don't remember if you said, you went this far, but um, well, somebody said it that 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 Jim dies. Jim does what, maybe you said, but Jim does what Henry should have done. Yeah, and so Jim gets wounded and killed, and that makes Henry, um, Henry jealous. But now, because the death of Jim motivates Henry, what has Jim done for Henry? He's been a motivation. He's, I'm trying to say it without saying it, yeah. Yeah, um, he died in Henry's place. So who does this sound like? Somebody dying in the place of others. All right. What are it's, it's the communion wafer, right? Um, right. It's a redemption. I don't. And I don't. I don't particularly like these kinds of this kind of analysis, but people have noticed it. That what are Jim Conklin's initials? Jesus, you like Jesus Christ. Right. Oh. In, in literature, great. I don't, I don't get that kind of reaction to it other than like sporting events. That's what people do in sporting events. Uh, but here you're doing it out of literature. That's, that's great. Um, okay, so um, I should point out at this point that going back to what somebody said earlier, I, I should we should point out that Henry doesn't go back to his unit. So, look, the, the, he, he turns around, he goes back, he joins the wounded, his friend dies, who dies for him, he kind of redeems him in a way. Now he has a motivation, and yet it, it, it's still not over. Um, what does he do next? In fact, he does the worst thing he did, maybe in the entire book, he does in chapter two. Ten. What does he do that's terrible? He does. And he this guy's dying. And Henry just leaves him out there to prove to prove that that this is the worst thing he does. Even on the last page of the book, Henry is thinking about that. He's not thinking about the death of Jim Conklin anymore. He's thinking about the death of this tattered soldier because he can't forgive himself for that. Now, why is that a, actually a sign of maturity? Not to leave him, that was terrible, but to feel bad about leaving him. Yeah, yeah. and there is that sense of, re, of repentance, like he's sorry he did it. Um, that's part of maturity, but what does he do? Like he leaves him, but he doesn't go, I can't be with you, I gotta go join my, my unit. He doesn't do that, what does he do? He wanders still. He'd been wandering ever since he left, and he sees some interesting things. And by the way, um, I think giving these titles, these chapters titles, I titled this, Henry Leaves a Tattered 
man to die. Put that down there. I bet at some point, as you review and look at this book, or even write about it, and look for what happens in chapter 10. Oh yeah, this is that event. Uh, chapter 9 was the death, the turning point. Number 2. Turning point number 2, the death of Jim Conklin. That's 9, because you're going to want to find these as you go back and trying to get a quote or something. Number 10 is he leaves the tattered soldier, uh, and the soldier keeps needling him. Like it's the, the, the wounds you can't see are the worst ones. And then 11... I just wrote arguments and counter arguments or you could write wandering because he's still not ready to go back. I would disagree with, with Kyle in this and I think it was Kyle or, or Max um, but I, I don't remember who said it but I, I, we, and you can disagree with me too. You can prove me wrong because we're talking about literature here. You know, It's not like it's the end of the world but um, I don't think Jim, I don't think Henry ever makes a decision throughout this whole business. He does. He never really makes a decision. Definitely, he doesn't make a decision to go back. The book has 24 or 25 chapters, something like that. Um, so we're chapter 11. So a lot of stuff is going to happen. I don't want to give it away. But he's still not consciously making a decision about going back. And in this chapter, he thinks about all the reasons he can't go back. And... Uh, Nick used the word rationalize. He's continually continuing to do that. Um, you remember some of the things he rationalized? Like some of the rationalization for not going back? I don't know how many of their number here. Anybody remember some of the things that he tried to excuse himself for not going back? What could they be? You could imagine some. Why wouldn't he want to go back to his union? He's not necessarily afraid to get killed anymore because that's sort of over but there's what, what's keeping him from going back yeah ashamed. exactly now he's ashamed to go back um, yeah he's going to have to go back and explain where have you been you know here's a guy this guy died and you ran away and you don't have a wound on you yeah That's right. Um, no one's going to believe that happened. Um, the funny thing is, they actually do. Um, how could you explain that? I mean, it, it, that's the most obvious explanation of where you've been. You were afraid and you ran away. Lots of people ran away. You were one of them. Um, maybe that's the very reason why they do believe it. Because so many people did it. That it's like and you're saying, yeah, well, I, well I'll well, i let you get to that point. There are other things here. If you, I don't have the page number with me, but it, he gives other reasons. Like, he, there's no rifle. He can't find a rifle. He's lost. I, j jot some of these down. You might be able to use them. And then what, primarily, it's what Nick said. Um, he's ashamed to do it, but he doesn't even have a rifle. Now, why is that a very bad excuse? And there are rifles all over the place. They're just they're scattered, so that wouldn't work. He could be he's lost. Of course, he could fight with another unit, but he's he he doesn't know where his unit is. Yes. He's like yes. Hungry, he's like These are the same things we use. That's when I love this. These are the same excuse. I don't have the right right material. Um, I don't really feel like it. I'll 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 go tomorrow. You know, I just don't feel good. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I'm aching. All these things are excuses. Um, and this is where he particularly comes comes up with the idea that he wished his unit would how would that help him if if they if they lose the war and the battle how would that help Henry's um, decision that's right yeah he was smarter we're not going to win anyway I'll just quit which is why That's right. Because now he, he can't even justify it that way. He even says in here that he um, he wished he were a corpse, which is the most ironic thing in the world, because uh, why did he run away in the first place? Yeah. Because he was a corpse. 
He didn't want to be a corpse. Now he'd give anything to be a corpse. He'd give anything to have a woman. Exactly. Um, and, and the last page, I just want you to note this. He said, in return to the creed of soldiers, um, let me read you an explanation for that. A defeat of the army had suggested itself to him as a means of escape from the consequences of his fall. He considered now, however, that it was useless to think of such a possibility. His education had been that success for his mighty blue machine was certain. He returned to the creed of soldiers. The creed of soldiers is that we can't lose. That's what he'd been taught. We're going to win, and so he returns to that. Um, well, that was a, a good discussion, and before I give you what I want you to do with this, um, have any of you had an experience like this? Not exactly like it, because no one's been in war, but have any of you had an experience that helped you grow up? Like, it, and I'm, my guess is that it was probably difficult because the, the, the fun things don't help you grow up. They keep you, they kind of keep us as a kid. But if you ever had a difficult thing, it's maybe the kind of thing you, you can't possibly, you couldn't possibly share it because it's so personal. But think about those things that have happened to you that you, you realize this is, it's terrible, but it's making me grow up. There are things about this I needed because it's helping me be, to grow up. And I think I gave a real superficial ones when I played football in, in um, high school. It was really hard to do. Um, and it, it, yeah, I felt like it made all of us kind of like more men than boys. But I think that that was, you know, that that's sports. It's not like it was a personal thing, a physical thing. I know some of you may have had those kind of experiences. It really and they forcing you to look at life a little differently, not as a kid. But anyway, th that's what this book is about. All right, so I, so what do we have here? Sweet. Uh, Sweet. Uh, I think I've got an answer. All right, so we have about five minutes. What's that? <laughs> Todd, good. Uh, you can wrap it all up. <laughs> trying to help you out. Anything you want to add? Well, what I'm going to ask you, you got five minutes. I'm going to ask, I do want you to answer these questions. There are a lot of them. Um, I think we'll probably spend some time with it tomorrow, but I want you, I'll give you five minutes to at least get started. Um, we have an hour and a half tomorrow, this kind of thing. I think this will, I didn't notice many of you taking notes, and I think it's really important to go through here. Some of the questions you can answer in one or two words. Um, there are actually more questions than, than needed, but even those questions are probably helpful. So I'm gonna ask you, um, at least halfway through the period, the long period tomorrow, I want these done. You can work them on, on them tonight if you want to. You've got five minutes you can work on. Just answer the ones that you see. You don't have time to move around and, and do any of that. But you can't answer. I would like an answer for it. Wait, the uh, illusions are due tomorrow, right? The what? The illusions. Yeah, that's so true. We'll so to don't do them tonight. We'll have time to work on them tomorrow. Yeah, you will have some time. Yeah, I, we have an hour and a half. <clears throat> the illusions are due. And, so I need to put that up here.